All right, let's take a look at section 8.6. In the past, in another section, we talked about the law of cosine, or the, I'm sorry, we talked about Pythagorean theorem, and then recently we've been talking about the uh, trig functions. And on all of those that we've been talking about, you've only dealt with a right triangle. Well, today we're going to deal with another type of a triangle, and that's basically a non-right triangle. Okay, so let's take, let's uh, really make this, let's see, yeah. Uh, it still looks like a right triangle. There we go. Let's make a triangle that looks like this. And we'll just call this side A, B, and C. Now, it's not a right triangle, but we're going to be able to solve for some things. Depending on what they give you, we're going to be able to solve for some things um, using uh, two laws. The first law we're going to do is called the law of sines. So you know the uh, trig function sine must be in here. But now we don't have to only have a right triangle. In the past, we've only had to have right triangles. Now we can have this thing right here. Um, I'll give you a hint. Um, we're going to use the law of sines under circ certain circumstances. And uh, one will be if we have a triangle, they, they give you two angles and a side, or they give you, I should say, angle-angle side with the side not being in between or they give you angle side angle. All right, so basically, if they give you two angles in one side, that's one situation where you can use the law of sines. In another situation, we're gonna do the example with this first. In another situation, um, let's put this in parentheses, they do this in the book. And then another situation, if they give you um, two sides and one angle. And remember, when we did congruent triangles, remember you couldn't have a side side angle or an angle side side, because if you wrote it backwards, it would be angle side side or ASS, and we don't want to write that. It's not the reason why you can't have it, but in this situation, if you have two sides that are given and one angle, you should be able to use the law of sines. So let's talk about this first situation first. Actually, let's do this. Let's um, show you the uh, rule for the law of sines. It a, it's a, looks a little different. It's not hard to memorize. It's actually kind of easy to memorize, but um, let's just show you what it is. It's this. It's A over the sine of capital A. Now, understand this. Let's write this in here. If I have these are uh, lowercase letters and they're the lengths of the sides of a triangle. This is lowercase a. If you look at the angle across from it or opposite that side a, we're going to call that angle a. And that's pretty important with what we're going to do today. If this is side b, you look across from it or opposite, that would be angle b. And that's a capital B. And this is lowercase c. This is side c. If you look across from that, we're going to call this capital C. So that's a little bit bigger than that. So uh, that's the difference between the lowercase a and the uppercase a. Remember, you can only take the sine of an angle, so that has to be uppercase. Now that's going to equal b over the sine of b. It's also going to equal c over the sine of angle c. Now you can write it like this, or let's scoot this down a little bit. Or you can write it like this if you want to. It really doesn't make any difference. But I'll show you in some examples that sometimes it might be better to write it one way or the other. And I'm going to show you why it might be better to put this, the length of the side on the top and the angle on the bottom. Or in this case, the angle is on the top and the length of the side is on the bottom. And it really doesn't matter. You can just pick one way or the other. and. Um, You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. All right, so there it is. I've got them all written down. You could write it any way that you want, but this is what we have. Now you notice you have three of them, but we're actually only going to use two at a time. So we're either going to take the A and the B, or the A and the C, or the B and the C. So we're not actually going to do all three at one time. We're just going to pair them up, but they are all equal to each other. There is a proof for this, but we're not going to go through the proof. I just want you to understand how to do this. So let's get an example, and I'm going to take this example right from the book so that um, you can kind of follow along. And I'll tell you what, I was going to go to yellow, but let's keep the triangle in white and we'll write our other stuff in yellow. So this, I'm going to try to make this triangle look like the one in the book, and about like this, about like that. Okay, it's pretty close. And let's put some stuff in here. Let's see what they give you. First of all, they name the angles right there, and they're going to put some uh, lengths, actually one length of one side. They're going to call this angle down here 21 degrees, 
and they call this one over here 97 degrees. Now notice what they've given you. They've given you two angles in one side and the side is not in between or it's not the included angle. So they've given you angle, angle, side. That's kind of a hint to say, all right, well, if they give you two angles and a non-included side, we're probably going to use the law of sines. Now there is another law we're going to learn in a few minutes, but um, right now we're just dealing with the law of sines. So what we're going to do Oh, they want you to find this right there. Now, I could call it X. I'll tell you what, let's not even call it X. Let's call it something else. If I call this angle C, then if you look across from it, this side would be side C. So let's call it C instead of X, okay? It might make it a little bit easier for what we're doing up here. They could have picked any letters they wanted to. They didn't have to pick A, B, and C, but they just made it easy for you when you first start off. So you're trying to solve for C. Now, remember what I said? It didn't matter how you write it. But if you're trying to solve for a side, what I would do, I would pick this right here. I would pick the one with the side on the top. I think it's easier to solve if what you're solving for is on the top and not on the bottom. So that's what we're going to do. Now, how do I know if I use the uh, A and the B? Well, let's see what they give us. All right, so what they've given us is they've given us... Well, they asked us to solve for side C, and they've given us angle C. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to put the C on the top and put over sine of C. Now, what are we going to use, the A or the B? Well, look what they give you here. They give you an angle, and they give you a side opposite that angle. Do you see how they're opposite each other? So if this is angle A, this right here, I'll just write it right here, would be side A. And that's what I'm going to do right here. Not even going to mess with the B. Because look, I don't know angle B, and I don't know side B right here. I could find angle B if I wanted because I know two angles of a triangle. I could add them up, take them away from 180, and figure it out. So I could find that, but I still don't know side B. Let's just use what I've, given, I've got right here. So I'm going to call this side A over the sine. Don't get confused between me saying side with a D and then sine with the N. And this would be the sine of A. So this is what we're going to use. Now, we know three of the four things. The only thing we don't know is this thing right here. So let's plug everything in and see what we know. We don't know C, so we put it over the sine of angle C. Now, notice, this side and this angle always have to be opposite each other. So what's the um, angle C? It's right here. It's 21 degrees. And now, I come over here. What's A? Side A. It's 16 over the sine of angle A. Remember, this angle is always opposite this side, so what angle is opposite 16? The 97, so it's the sine of 97 degrees. Now look what we have. We've got three of the four things that we actually know. And what are we trying to solve for? You're trying to solve for this side C. A couple ways you could do this. A lot of people say, oh, let's cross multiply. But since I already have the C on the top, all i got to do is one step. I have to get rid of this sine of 21 degrees. Notice what it's doing. It's being divided. It's C divided by the sine of 21. In algebra, what do we always do to get rid of something that's being divided? That's right. We always multiply both sides. So in a simple step, I know I'm going to get rid of this. How do I get rid of it? By multiplying by the sine of 21. So if I multiply the left side by the sine of 21, it cancels out. And if I multiply the right side by the sine of 21, this is what I get. Now this thing right here is what we're going to put into the calculator. So let's go ahead and put that into our calculator and let's see what we get. Let's clear all that. So I'm just going to write it like this. 16 sine of 21 okay, divided by the sine of 97. So the sine of 97. And just hit equals and there you go. So side C is equal to, oops, let's get back to my calculator again. Uh, what's that, about 35.3? And you know what? This didn't come out right. I have a feeling I know why. Let's take a look. Yep, look at this. My calculator was in radians. I should have checked that. My fault. But that was a good learning lesson. I didn't do that on purpose, but it is a good learning lesson. Make sure we put it in degrees. So I was wondering, something's going on. There's no way that's going to be 35. Um, because look, this is 16 and it's opposite 97. Well, C is opposite a 21 degree angle so this must be even smaller than 16 so I knew I did something wrong so let's give that another shot and let's see it again now I changed it to um, uh, two degrees so let's try it one more time so we're gonna put the same exact stuff in. it's gonna look exactly the same but this one was in radians which is I which I don't want 
I wanted in degrees. So 16 sine of 21, let's try it again, divided by the sine of 97. And let's see what we get. There it is. That's a lot better. 5.8 is what I want. We'll round it to 5.8. So it's 5.8. And that's that right there. So that's how you use the law of sines. Um, it's kind of nice to put the whatever you're trying to solve for on the top. Then it makes your algebra much easier. Let's try another one. Okay, let's take a look at this triangle. Now, what do we have here? We've got a side, a side, and an angle. Remember, if you have a side, a side, and an angle, that's another uh, situation where you can use the law of sines. So let's see what we're trying to do. We're trying to solve for angle K. This angle right there, that's what we're trying to solve for. So if I'm trying to solve for an angle, it'd be nice if I had the angle on top. Remember, we're going to write this ratio out like this. So we're going to solve for K, but I can't just put K here. I'm going to put the sine of K. Look back at your... Um, you know, at the law of sines when I wrote it out earlier. Now, we always put the side opposite the angle. So what side is opposite angle K? That would be 10. So this is like little side K. We don't have to write the little K up here, but we'll just put the number in. So that would be a 10. So you put the 10 right here. Now you must know the other angle and side combination, which we know right here. So we'll use the H, which is 45 degrees, and the little H down here, which is 8. So again, we're put, we, we decided to put the uh, sine of k on the top because whatever I want to solve for, I think it's a lot easier if I put it on the top. So I'm also going to have to put this, the sine of 45 degrees. So I put the angle on the top and the side on the bottom. What side is opposite 45? That would be 8 right there. So that's how we set it up. Hopefully you see that it's really not that hard to set it up. You, try to, you look to see what you're solving for. You put that on the top. And then you look opposite, put that on the bottom. Then you do the same thing for the other angle and side combination that are opposite each other. Okay, see how these are opposite each other and these are opposite each other? That's what you want to look for when you look at the law of sines. So those are the situations where that's going to occur. And now we just have to solve for k. Now if we wanted to solve for k, we have to uh, get something um, away from the left-hand side, and that's the 10. This is being divided by 10, so we multiply by 10. You could put the 10 out here, but it's a lot nicer if you put the 10 right in front. So we got rid of the 10, but we also have to get rid of the sign. This is the sine of k equals all this. Now we've been doing this for a little while now when we did the trig stuff. How can you get rid of a sign? You don't divide by a sign, you take the inverse of the sign. So k is going to be by itself, and you got to take the inverse of the sign on the other side. And now you just rewrite all this and now it's ready to throw into the calculator and let's see what we get all right so that's how we're gonna solve for K we just had to do a little bit of one little extra step we had to multiply by 10 which is that big of a deal and then you had to get rid of the sign which you take the inverse of the sign to both sides and again we've been doing that so that shouldn't be new to you at all you should be pretty familiar with that now you're gonna chuck all that into your calculator so let's bring the calculator back up scooch it over here so I can see it let's double check make sure we're in degrees we are good thing all right and let's put the stuff in um, we're gonna go second function sine and then now watch since I'm doing a division here watch what I'm gonna do I don't know if I really need to do this but this is gonna make me feel a lot better I'm gonna put all of this in a set of parentheses uh, by itself so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do 10 sine of 45 just close that 45 parentheses. Then I'm going to hit divide. Then I'm going to hit 8. Now watch. I'm going to close that parentheses. See what I just did? This parentheses right here and this one right here kind of groups all that stuff together. Now I'm going to do one more parentheses because of this one here. And I may not even need to do that. You could probably try it. And it might work without that extra parentheses there. I don't know. It just makes me feel a little bit better. And let's see what we get. We get 62.1. And let me just double check, yep. And we'll just round it to 62. Since it's an angle, a lot of times they just round angles to a degree and not to a decimal. But if you put 62.1, I'd be perfectly fine with that, no big deal. I'm just looking at the book and they say 62 degrees. So K is equal to 62 degrees. And there it is. So you took a triangle that was not a right triangle, or at least you didn't know it was a right triangle, and you were able to figure out a missing angle on this one and you were able to find out a missing side on the other one 
even though it wasn't a right triangle. So that's the cool thing about the law of sines. Let's do another type. That was the law of sines, and we'll have some time to practice that in class um, because I know you're gonna. It's a little bit different for you, so um, we'll make sure that you know you have time to practice in class. You can ask questions and that kind of thing. But let's go to the next thing, and um, I'll just clear the screen before I start talking about that. This time we're going to talk about another law. This is not sines, but you probably guessed it already. It's called the law of cosines. Now there's no law of tangents. Okay, People ask me that all the time. There's just law of sines and law of cosines. So let me write it out first, and then I'll show you how to use it. Now, at first it's going to look a little crazy. You're going to think, oh no, I can never memorize this. But the first part of it, in fact, more than half of this is something, or just about half of it, is something that you already know and that's the Pythagorean Theorem. So I'm going to start off writing the Pythagorean Theorem. I'm going to start off with the C. I'm not going to go A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'll start off with the C and then it's A squared plus B squared. So that's about half of the law of cosines. So without even knowing, you already knew half of the law of cosines and that's kind of nice. Now we throw a little bit more on here. So you're going to have to memorize it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, after you do these a few times, you're you're going to get used to it. So we put minus 2, and then AB, one more thing. Now it says law of cosine, so you got to have a cosine in here somewhere. And here it is, the cosine of angle C. That's the law of cosines. Now they actually write three different versions of this in the book, and some books do that. Now it's a weird looking box. Let's try to make that look a little straighter. There we go. What they do is this. Now this is side C, this is side A and side B, and angle C and side A and B right here. A lot of times they'll do this. I'll write it, but you don't really have to do this. Sometimes they'll write it like this. They'll write A squared equals. Now what are the other two sides? If one of the sides is A, what are the other two sides? Well that would be B and C. So we do that. Minus 2. Now again, what goes here? These two right here are these two. So instead of AB, I'm going to put BC. And then we take the cosine of what? We take the cosine of the angle that's opposite this side on the outside here. So this, in this case, this would be the cosine of A. Now you could memorize both of these, but that would be kind of silly. I just kind of memorize one of them, and then you, you get the idea of how to use this thing. I could have written it like this. I could have put the B out here. See, this was the C, this is the A, this is the B. But what would I do here? I'd go a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of the angle that's opposite this side right here, and that would be the cosine of b. So you could write it all three ways. I'm not asking it to memorize all three of them. I would just pick one of them, and this is the one that I would pick right here, and just memorize that one. In fact, I'm going to get rid of all these. I would just memorize this one and I think that makes things a lot easier for you. So let's do an example on how in the world are we going to use this thing. Well, first of all, before we do the example, um, you're going to use the law of cosines basically under two situations. You're going to use it when you have a side, an angle, and a side. So when they give you two sides and an included angle, that's a good time to use the law of cosines. And another time to use the law of cosines would be if they give you all three sides. Let's say they didn't give you any angles whatsoever and they just gave you the three sides, then you can use the law of cosines. So let's do an example. I'll set it up first and um, we'll see how to use this thing. Okay, here's what they give you. And this is a real straightforward law of cosine problem. And you're going to see this kind um, all the time with law of cosines. It's when they give you two sides and an angle in between. Remember, side, angle, side. So that's, that's a sure indication that you're going to go ahead and use the law of cosines. They ask you to solve for side C. We'll make that C right here. So this is what they're asking you to solve for. So we're going to use the law of cosines. So let's write down what our little formula is. Let's put it right here. Okay. So it's C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C. All right, so that's what we're going to use. And this works out perfectly as far as our letters and all that kind of stuff. It, look at this 9 right here. It's opposite angle A, so that would be side A. This 11 is opposite angle B, so this would be side B. So like I said, they, they make this work out perfectly. Now you know they could use different letters. They could use X, Y, and Z. They could use whatever combination of three letters that they want. It's not always going to be A, B, and C, but it will still fit this format right here. 
So what we're trying to do is we're trying to solve for C. And notice, the C that we're solving for is opposite the angle that they give you. They only give you one angle. All right, and this side right here is opposite the one angle that they're going to give you. So you should know what's going to go in here. So the C is just going to be C, all right, because we don't know what it is, equals A squared plus B squared. Now, it actually doesn't matter which one you call A or B, but we'll just do it the way it's written. So it's 9 squared plus 11 squared minus 2. Now, it's times AB, so I'm going to put parentheses here and put the A and the B here. The A is 9 and the B is 11 times the cosine of angle C. Now remember, this angle right here always has to be opposite this side. So here's side C, look at the angle that's opposite, it's 28 degrees. And you look at that and you say, okay, I, I can plug all that stuff in, I kind of get that. But now, the hardest part about doing this problem is basically putting it into your calculator. So um, let's see how we're going to put this into our calculator. Let's see, do I have enough room to even put it in here? I guess. I'll just put it right here. And um, we had a C squared over here. So let's do this though. Before I actually put it into the calculator, let me um, do something here. I am going to put a parentheses in my calculator right here and right here. I think that's really important. Okay, I'd put it in different colors so you can kind of see it. And I'll tell you what, let's scooch this over so my calculator will fit everything. Yeah, let's scooch this over here and then hopefully we'll be able to see the calculator. Let's try that again. There we go. That's better. Oops. Calculator ran away. There we go. Try this again. So now what we're going to do is throw this into a calculator. Now this is C squared. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put all this in the calculator first and then at the very end I'm going to take the square root because I want to find what C is. So let's turn this on. Make sure we're in degrees, which I am. And let's start putting stuff in. We go 9 squared plus 11 squared minus. Now this is where I think it's very important to put a parentheses. Put a parentheses right there because we're going to do all this calculation. Then we're going to subtract it from all this stuff over here. So this should be in parentheses. So it's going to be 2 and then times 9 times 11. Now I don't have to hit times. All i got to do is hit cosine and 28. Now, I just closed that 28 in here, but now I also have to close this first parentheses that I made. All right, so I closed all that. I hit equals. I get that number right there, but that's not what the other length is. I've got to find C, so I've got to take the square root. So on this calculator, I'm going to go square root, and then I'm going to go with my answer. So what it just did, it's going to take the square root of this number right here. Now, 27 is a little more than 5, so it should be like 5 point something fairly small. Let's see. Yep. 5.2 and that's basically how you're gonna do that and that's um, I'm looking at the book and they put 5.2 degrees how dare they it's not a degree it's a side it's a length of a side so they messed up right there so C is approximately 5.2 it's not exactly okay because it got that big old decimal there but that's approximately 5.2 it's not degrees because we found the length of a side is just 5.2, whatever it is, inches, feet, whatever. All right, that was pretty straightforward. Um, it doesn't get much easier than this as far as the law of cosine, so hopefully that makes a little sense. Let's do one more type, and it's a little trickier on the math, um, but let's uh, set it up first and I'll show you how to do this. Okay, here's another law of co cosines, and how do you know you're going to use law of cosines on this? Because look, they've given you three sides. So when they give you side, 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 then that's a good indication that you're going to use the law of cosines. So what are we trying to solve for? Angle M, this angle right there. So what do we have? We've got the side that's opposite and we have the other two sides. So let's uh, let's write this down. I think we can squeeze it in about right here. Let's do this in a different color. Let's just go white this time. So I'm going to go C squared. Remember the C squared? the side that's opposite the angle. This time we don't know the angle, but we know we're trying to solve for that angle. So I still have to look opposite that angle right there. That's going to be my C. So this time it's actually going to be a number. It's not going to be a letter. So it's 8 squared equals, now A squared plus B squared. That's the other two sides. doesn't matter what order you put it in. We'll start with the 6 and then add the 3 squared to it. Minus 2 times what? times these two right here. 
so it's going to be times 6 times 3 and it's the cosine of the angle that's opposite this side what angle is opposite side 8 well M is and that's what we're trying to find we're trying to actually find what angle M is equal to so I'll tell you what let's grab this line so I don't have to rewrite it and just oops if I could grab it let's try this again there we go let's put it right here and we're gonna do a little bit of math with this a little bit of algebra to get M by itself wow what happened there it goes and let's scooch it right there okay this is what I'm trying to do I'm trying to solve for angle M now it looks a little tough because M is in the middle of all this mess so what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to get rid of all this mess the 6 squared the 3 squared the 2 6 3 even the cosine I gotta get rid of all that stuff to get M by itself it's really not that difficult after you uh, take a look at it so what we're gonna first do is we're gonna get rid of the stuff that's being added or subtracted so I'm gonna get rid of the 6 squared and the 3 squared so I'm going to do that by subtracting a 6 squared and subtracting a 3 squared from both sides. So I've already got an 8 squared over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of a 6 squared by subtracting a 6 squared. I didn't show it. You know it's going to go away, so I just crossed it out. I'm going to get rid of this positive 3 squared by subtracting a 3 squared from both sides. So I did that to both sides. Okay. Now watch this. I'm going to, in the same step, I'm not going to bring everything down, okay? I just think it's a waste. What I'm going to do, I've got a negative 2 times 6 times 3 times a cosine of m. Well, how do you get rid of something that's being multiplied? Well, you do the opposite, which is division. So I'm going to get rid of the negative 2 by dividing. I'm going to divide by 6. I'm going to divide by a 3. So what I do to this side, I have to do to the other side. Again, I'm not going to show this because I know it's going to cancel out. But how did I get rid of the negative 2? I divided. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by a negative 2. I'm going to divide by a 6. And I'm going to divide by a 3. So that will go, that will go, and that will go. And all that stuff right there is going to equal the cosine of m. Well, let's scooch this over a little bit so I have some room to work with right there. How do we get rid of the cosine? We did this in the other problem. I have to take the inverse of the cosine so that will go and that will turn into the inverse cosine now that seemed real crazy and it seemed like that algebra was very difficult but if you think about it you only did three things you subtracted these things that I consider that one thing right you subtracted these two you divided these three I think that's the second step and then you took the inverse of the cosine so it was really only three steps subtracted 6 squared and 3 squared right here divided by negative 2 6 and 3 right here then you took the inverse of the cosine right there and you got m by itself so now m is just sitting pretty and all we got to do is just put this stuff into the calculator you like you're probably thinking what I, don't, I can't put that in the calculator it's actually pretty easy so let's take a look at our calculator again and see what we're gonna do I think this will fit yep and so this is all calculator work. Most of this stuff, it's probably harder to put it in the calculator than it is to actually figure it out um, how to do the math on this. You could hit cos inverse cosine first, but I'd like to do all the work first, and at the very end, I'll do the inverse cosine. I don't know. That's just me. You don't have to, but I'd like to do it like that. So I'm going to go 8 squared minus 6 squared, uh, squared right there, and then minus 3 squared, all right, and... I'm going to hit divide. I think you can do that. I'm, you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking it might be better if I put a uh, cancel it all. Let's, let's do this. Let's put all this in parentheses. I don't think you have to do this, but I'm just being careful. So I'm going to put it in parentheses anyway. All right, and then minus three squared. I don't know. It just makes me feel better if I group it all together. So I group the top. I hit divide and I'm going to group the bottom. Right? It just makes me feel better if I did that. So I'm going to go negative 2 times 6 times 3 and I'm going to close that out right there. So I group the top, group the bottom, put a divide in between. I'm going to get an equals right there. That's what I get when I get an equals. Now I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this second function cosine. Second function cosine of this. How do I get that? I hit answer right there. 
So it's going to take the second function cosine of all this stuff right here. I hit equals and I get about 121.8. We'll round it since it's an angle to uh, the nearest degree. So that would be just 122. So angle M is equal to 122. It is an angle, so it's in degrees. So we're going to write it as degrees. There you go. Hey, that's a lot to throw at you in one lesson, but you're going to have time to practice this. I'll probably give you a couple days, I think, uh, to practice these, some from the book, some from the uh, worksheet, and um, you'll have a lot of time in class to ask questions of me, and um, I think that'll straighten things out a little bit. All right, good luck with this, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.